Kevin Stickney up next. He's the Managing Director of Erda Energy and a big supporter of this event. We've seen you here two or three years now on the trot. He's going to talk to us. Now, this is really worth sitting up for. The hard part of net zero made easy. There's a challenge. Give it up for Kevin. Thank you. Good morning, all. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Kevin Stickney uh, from Edda Energy. Um, Edda, as I'm sure you're probably all aware, is the Norse god of the earth, <clears throat> famed for her wisdom. And very apt today, given that we are stood in a building called Dynamic Earth. Uh, we certainly think that the, um, the earth is a very dynamic place. <clears throat> and indeed, in the same city as a, a, a famous chap, James Hutton, <clears throat> lived and worked. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Groundbreaking um, geologist developed uh, society's understanding and revolutionized our understanding of the Earth's history, um, allowing, I think, us to, to, to move forward, understanding how we can use the Earth to contribute to some of our current dilemmas. <coughs> Excellent. <coughs> so, Erda Energy, as I said, we are a geo exchange solutions company aiming to maximize efficiency. Uh, using the earth to, uh, to reduce heating and cooling energy and at the same time decarbonizing uh, heating and cooling. <clears throat> what I want to show to you today is, is a couple of projects um, that, that sort of demonstrate uh, what's achievable uh, and then as this is a, a sort of net zero projects conference, show you how we are delivering on net zero and what that actually looks like. <clears throat> So as we've heard from, from our speakers earlier today, there's been a lot of progress in electricity. Electricity has decarbonized rapidly, uh, and especially in, in, in Scotland, we've heard that there's, there's lots of spare electricity and we're even paying to, to turn it off. <clears throat> so electrification is, is an answer to meeting your decarbonization needs now. It's not obviously the, the only answer, there's been a lot of good speakers here today, putting forward different solutions. But what I'm here to show you today is that it is a, a proven solution, um, risk-free. <clears throat> so what I've got for you are two examples um, of projects that we've done recently, uh, and then one example uh, of a project that's, that's, that demonstrates the delivery of net zero. <clears throat> so this is a, a building a new build um, for the University of Sheffield, as you can see, um, a brand new faculty of social sciences. <clears throat> for this, we used 16 of our Erda boreholes to satisfy the heating and cooling of the, of the whole building. <clears throat> you can see there some of the images of, um, of the plant and the, um, of the building itself. <clears throat> In this one, the client really wanted to, to make a statement, not only with the building, but the, the choice of energy, and to demonstrate to their um, stakeholders operation of, of, of net zero buildings. <clears throat> so we used a range of heat pumps and a range of refrigerants, including CO2, <clears throat> so progressive um, choices of refrigerants. <clears throat> It was a Briam excellent building. And we've been involved from design, install, and, and now operation. <clears throat> what we're looking to do with this building is treat heating and cooling um, as energy assets rather than the, the normal liabilities that energy is often seen as. We capture the energy that's rejected from the cooling systems and we store it in the earth and we store that across the seasons and use the earth as a battery. We can then extract that additional energy out of the earth to, to serve the building in winter. <clears throat> and as we do, we're making that ground cooler, so you're building up a coal battery, which we can then use to efficiently cool the building across the summer. <clears throat> 
one of the key things that the client wanted from this building, not only you know, a, a flagship visually building, was for it to become a, a hub for future thermal energy expansion. So this is designed to capture the energy um, that this building uses uh, and allow us to export that, build, uh, that energy to, to neighboring buildings. Um, so that's the, the, the brand new building. Not everybody has, uh, has got those in their future right now. <clears throat> but you've probably got one of these types of building. This was the existing building. <clears throat> so Oxford Brookes University, we're engaged with them on a transition. So they want to, to decarbonize, as, as lots of clients do. <clears throat> um, and with our unique technology, we can actually use the ground and enable clients to use the ground <clears throat> in relatively small and challenging spaces. Now, unfortunately, you can see in the car park there, you know, once we've done, once we've made a mess, once we're away and tidied up, pretty much all you see then is, is, is your land returned to its normal use. <clears throat> but as a project, um, sorry, as a client, this client published, published their climate emergency declaration in 2021, and then by the end of 2022, they'd install this new major piece of, of energy infrastructure that's helping them on their way to, um, to decarbonization. Uh, and as, as recent as, as yesterday, we were talking about starting the next phase of their journey. So they're already planning to build off of the success of this one to do further um, decarbonization. <clears throat> So I talked about proof and um, meeting the challenge. And it's a, it's a bit of a dry chart, but I love this one and the one, on the, the one next to it. This is a building um, less than five miles from where you're all sat today in this city. This is the picture of a transition, transition of energy uh, and, and carbon next. And this shows you on the left back in 2013, where we eliminated gas from the site. You had a daily average electrical demand in the blue. So the client, when they're looking at their um, energy burden, if you like, is looking at the green line. And what you can see here is across the 10 years, more than 10 years, <coughs> of the journey of this building, <coughs> how their energy is getting more and more efficient. And what does that look like in terms of carbon? You can see there the transition, eliminating gas, and building on the back of a decarbonizing electrical grid. They are practically at net zero now. Those carbon factors are from uh, the UK wide grid, but demonstrates, even within the UK-wide numbers, that this client has actually achieved their 2030 targets 14 years early. And you could argue that they are already effectively at net zero, looking at what's been going on in the last few months. <clears throat> so again, 27 years early in terms of achieving net zero. And this is a building, as I say, not five miles from where we're all stood today. And if we placed that in, in, in the Scottish grid, a little bit cheeky, but using the Scottish numbers, as, uh, as you already heard today, the, the, the electrical grid in Scotland is, is practically zero. <clears throat> if you applied the Scottish figures with high energy efficiency, I took this snapshot late last week, you can see the heat delivered is uh, considered net zero. <clears throat> so I'll leave you with a quote uh, from James Hutton, um, who, who suggests that the, the most economical way um, of, of working systems are ones where natural operations are performed. We certainly think that, that using the earth is a, is a natural way of decarbonizing. Thank you. Thank you.